Greetings and welcome everyone. It's All You Can Geek Games Cast, episode 371. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Gast, joined by Mike Zanidi. What's up? Corey Feinside. Hey guys. Hey, and Tony Korkanakis. You have failed me for the last time. <laughs> All right. Welcome, listeners. Welcome, viewers, to episode 371. <laughs> Uh, we've got some news from, well, even like two weeks ago. So if you hear some older news, I'm sorry. We didn't have a podcast last week due to, um, personal issues. Could get together and do it. So, um, yeah, here we go. We're going to do this one. <laughs> so, uh, once again, listeners, we have a movie cast. If you haven't heard that, we talk a lot about Justice League numbers. So maybe you don't want to hear that. I don't know. But, uh, we do have a Justice League spoiler cast as well. Um, so tune into that if you've watched Justice League and want to know what we thought. It's bad. Anyways, um, <laughs> so couldn't resist, couldn't resist. Last oh uh, two weeks ago, we had Valkyria Chronicles four uh, announced, which I thought was fun because I didn't know three existed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even the fourth one; it's the fifth one too. Is yeah. it the fifth one? I'm so confused. Uh, the good news about this is it was announced for PS4, Xbox, and Switch, uh, which I thought was awesome to announce because I this kind of a game I would love to play on the Switch uh, on the go. Um, Strategy so games just yeah. lead, led itself to, to the yeah. portability. Yeah. It, it's really cool to hear that, and that that was really why I put this on here because I thought like I'm like that's uh, awesome to hear. And then I saw the switch. I didn't even see the switch at first. I thought it was going to be a PS4 exclusive. This game, and I was like, oh wow, it's coming to that. That's awesome. Um, so I, I really like finally finished after how many years, Corey? Valkyrie yeah. Chronicles this year. Uh, so I would like to thank everybody. Could thank me if they want. I because I finished one. They then announced four. We all know. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, so, like, so you're like they're yeah. like, oh, finally, Jim Gass has finished the game. We can finally greenlight Valkyria yep. Chronicles. They, they, they were tracking me. Well, apparently it's been like, how long ago did you finish the game? Because it's been like this game's been in development for a while. So, uh, yeah. Well, I started the game. They must have done it when I bought the game then, because it was like you know I bought that a long well, time ago. It's been a while, like, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it seems like it's pretty far along. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, coming next year. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Yeah, it's good. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, other news last I, I, week. I like the first one a lot. So. Yeah, I really did like the first one. I, do, I can't tell you about two or three, but uh, I did like the first PSP one. games. So. Yeah. Um, Splatoon 2 is getting a patch. Did they get this yet? For, to fix yes, the game? Friday. Oh, cool. Uh, so they fixed... Uh, well, you can actually change your weapon loadouts now uh, mm-hmm. without having to go all the way back to the lobby. So that was pretty cool news. Excellent. That's so amazing, because that was like one of my biggest grace. Because, I mean, even playing with you, because the thing is, if you're playing with yeah. other people... Like the whole party has to back out because otherwise it's like if I back out, Corey plays a match without me, and I'm just like twiddling my thumbs for three to four minutes. Like, cool, just because I wanted to fucking change my weapon. Yep. So thank God, thank yeah. God. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of my other stuff though in the patch. Yeah, that's um, good. new weapons, new maps, new salmon run map. So good stuff. I mean, free DLC. You know, it's not like yeah. they're charging you for it or loot crating you for it yeah which we're gonna move into here uh we also <laughs> had the full backpedal which did make the podcast i think last week of ea like completely removing loot boxes from the game uh we didn't get to cover that last week so it was like we were talking about it on the previous podcast about how they were going to reduce the rates of game of the players and now of the uh, cost and now loot boxes are just completely out of the game uh, for now for now for now, for yeah, now. For now. that's the thing <laughs> uh but this is like spiraling here. We have all this. There's so much news to talk about with this today, and I'm not even sure how to do this because we were. I was going to talk about Bungie with this. I don't even know how you can go to Bungie without saying EA's investors lost three billion dollars uh, first. Uh, that was announced today. Uh, it's it as a result of this, Corey. You're more of our financial guy. Well, I think that like like I said on the podcast before, like as an investor, you want a game that's going to be monetized and that is but going to continue to you get don't want more this money. Feedback apparently because no, I, well, obviously investors. because and I think this is like a way overreaction to what it is. Becoming. Yeah, and I think that this is like Ben Affleck level of like shit show stuff going on here. It's like well, now it's become national news, so something has to happen. Interna- international news. It's like fucking news. Belgium and Australia are chiming yeah, it's in. Funny. It's, it's, like, what? it's ridiculous, because, again, the loot boxes are not the problem. <laughs> it's EA's implementation of Here's the loot boxes. Here's the thing boxes. about this, and I, I agree with you, Corey. Like, you, I, how is it that suddenly this is gambling when, like, kids can buy stuff from, like, a blind pack of cards and stuff, and that's not gambling? No, I mean, and I was talking about, you know, arcades for years, you know, you 
win tickets or tokens or claw yeah, machines, which have an element of chance. Well, technic- or carnival games where you spin a the wheel and you get nothing. Techni- technically, I'm not saying I agree with it, but technically, it's a game of skill. And technically, but, video but games not, are a game of skill. Well, not, I, those, I agree. not those <laughs> wheels where you have to choose something, and if you get the number, you get a prize. If not, I, I know. I'm not, yeah, not sure. saying I. Yeah, but I mean, as I far as like that. investing and, and things like that, yeah, like we were talking about. EA was doing fine with how they were getting, like, monetizing their games. So that that was all fine and dandy. Uh, but because of the Star Wars name, I think is really where it hit the fan as far right. as... Like, well, everyone they were was doing it with FIFA. They were game. doing it with, what, uh, Mac, right? Game. Yeah, they're they're all, all their sports like, games. Like, they're, all their, their superstar card game, what, Ultimate Team. That's what Yeah, Ultimate Team games. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, they've been monetizing their games for years now. And as an but, investor, that's been fantastic because you're getting money... Beyond the sixty dollars, yeah. uh, they, they're going and they, their stock has been going up yeah. year over year. Yeah. Uh, and then with this Star Wars name and the big, you know, that is big Disney. <laughs> well, this would have sold like unbelievably well. You know, I, and so it's the way they it just rubbed people the wrong way, and it became the thing to talk about. Which you know, like nobody the, wanted to talk about any other aspect of the game no. at all. Didn't matter. Yeah, the other aspects of this game are not good. Like I've heard that it's very inferior to one. I've heard. Only I wouldn't even know. I, I, I read I've only, a couple I've of only heard that it's been better. Yeah. I'm getting this from uh, what's his name, Jeff, Bombcast. Oh, Gersman. Yeah. Ah, whatever. <laughs> I, can, I, 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 I don't. I don't like him. I, 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 think I, I, don't, I don't hate. I don't hate him. It's just I usually find myself on the other end of the spectrum. Whatever he says, it's just like. Yeah. No, so I can completely that. disagree it's, with you. It's, it's polarizing. I, I, I'm usually on on his side when it comes to stuff. But <laughs> as far as like that game itself, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because what matters right now is the loot thing boxes. that people are talking about, and it's the loot boxes, the lack of loot boxes, and the monetization of this game. And it's just <laughs> been a shit show of just people misinformation too. Like just people just talking about it because they want to be a part of the conversation. Yep, and it's, there's, there's like norm, like people who have never like don't even play video games talking about this now, like where they don't know any information and all they're saying is like, oh, I heard you can't even play this game without paying more for it in the game, so you buy it yeah. and you pay it again. Right, because that's an error. And, uh, here's the thing, like I'm not defending EA because I'm, I think out of all of you, I'm think I'm the biggest critic of EA. Yeah, um, I so. And I definitely think they got way too greedy and the the model that they chose to do for Battle uh, oh. Battlefront Two, I almost said Battlefield, uh, the the way they were doing it was not in favor of the player at all. So I understand getting the backlash, I understand the heat, but uh, I am really surprised that it got as big as it did. Like you were saying, mention Core, like it just blew up overnight. That stupid Reddit post. And then here's the thing, EA kind of like fanned the flames a little bit and not in their favor and made it worse. And then every time they tried to course correct it, it just made things worse. It's like, oh, like, yeah, okay, well, you know, that's our model, blah, blah, blah. It's like. That started the whole conversation, the, the, the most downvoted comment ever on Reddit. Yeah. And then they're like, ooh, okay, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it and this, that, and the other thing. And then it's like, oh, look, not only we reduce that, we reduce like, the, 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 what you gain from it, and we're going to lock you out after you uh, accumulate a certain uh, amount in like probably one of the best modes or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, fuck you. And it's like, oh, my God, God like seriously? Like you need to handle this correctly the first time you can't just keep knee-jerk reaction changing it and uh i mean it just happened and i'm pretty sure disney just whipped out their dick and slapped ea across the face because but like uh, yeah, according I mean, first to of all, news, disney disney not like innocent in this situation you can't say they're 100 on this but because they like they had to have known there was stuff in this game well no i'm sure they were they they did but the thing is the way that ea handled it was yeah. well, it's like i said terrible like it just and they weren't. Worse. They were not going to do anything about it. No, it's all PR. Severe as, as what's is what's happening now. They weren't going to do that. But now that Disney stepped in, and we know Disney stepped in and said, "Hey, we need to right. make some changes." And, and not just Disney. Like the CEO of Disney called the CEO of EA. Yeah. And hours later, it's like, "Yep, yeah, no, no monetization for now. Like, we'll we'll come back to it." It's like. Really? We, that's, neg- we were saying that last podcast, like, you don't have negative press going to, into the Star Wars month. You just don't. No, no, absolutely. Because that's the thing is, no matter how much money Disney would have or will be making from this deal, it's it's paltry in terms of how much damage potentially this has done to the brand. Hmm. 
I mean, this uh, Battlefront Two should have been like no brainer. Like yeah. get people hyped, celebrated, up. yeah, right, celebration of of the franchise and the series. Because from what I read, like, this, and you're getting like the the Force Awakens, the new the 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 third trilogy characters in this game, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, they're supposed to be in the campaign something that supposedly ties into the Last Jedi, um, which supposedly I read. Um, uh, it, well, it ties into before. before oh, I'm sorry, before, but. It hopefully will be expanded upon in mm. the last Jedi, but uh, it, it just really fucked them over. And like I said, um, <laughs> you don't fuck with Disney. <laughs> they just yeah. they care more about their brand than the money. Well, IP is what sure. they. I mean, that's what they have. Right, right. and that's what they. Yeah. You know, right. That's what's valuable to them. But yeah, it's and it's amazing that they actually went and did <laughs> that because, like you said before, Jim, like investors are just getting fucked up the ass now for this yeah yeah i wonder uh, if this would end up being like the future like way to do something like this though to like have a grace period where you can earn experience with no one can buy anything and then if you buy the game late for perhaps a discount then you can pay money to catch up i wonder if that's like a way to do this yeah i mean uh, other games have done that like league of legends you can buy boosts Mm-hmm. XP boost and all know, MMOs have that. that when yeah, all MMOs. Yeah. Right now, yeah. I just saw a deal for like uh, Cyber Cyber Week or whatever, where they're like, "Oh, you can get a instantly level up a character in WoW to a hundred for like fifty bucks or something like that." Yeah, you know, it costs like a hundred or whatever. Uh, and that's the thing is like, you know, I, I think there is a gray area where it's like, look, you have time and you have money. Some people have more time than money, and some people have more money than time. So that's fine. I'm okay if like somebody wants to like pay to get on equal footing with me like that's fine somebody wants to drop a thousand bucks to get to like max level so they can raid with me or pvp with me whatever i don't care like it, it honestly that's going to benefit me because i'm going to have play the game for longer and probably be better than them anyway so whatever mm. um but what bothers me about this whole situation is just ea has like now fucked the entire industry up for like loot crates because now everybody else is go- like well, getting or I was going to move into Bungie now with this one. Like, that's a perfect tie-in for Bungie because now Bungie's getting flack for Destiny 2. Uh, well, that, it's slightly different, but we'll get we'll, we'll, totally we'll, different that's a, issue, That's a actually. throttling uh, XP issue, but they, I guess you're right. That's not loot crate issue. You're right. So uh, Indirectly it is, but we can, we can talk about that. But what I wanted to get to before that was, like, all, you have all these developers that did have loot crate things, microtransactions, whatever you want to call it, and they were doing fine. It wasn't always the best, but it wasn't the worst. Um, and you I mean you have games like Rocket League and Overwatch and uh, whatever Injustice Just to, even Injustice yeah. like all these people are fine with it. These games are are praised. These games reviewed well. Um, you know, make money hand over fist. But now EA fucks it up because they got too greedy. And now, oh, government could possibly get involved. I'm just like, really, really. And, and not only that. Here's the thing that really, really triggers me is the fact that all these people are so up in arms about these fucking microtransactions in Battlefront 2 when we have the fucking net neutrality shit that's going on. It's like, really? Like, that's the battle you want to be fighting right now? Like, microtransactions in a Star Wars game that you're probably only going to play for, like, two years before Battlefront 3 comes out? It's it's aggravating. It's honestly aggravating. No, it's absolutely. Because, like, like you said, like we're taking resources away from things that are a little bit more important right now. Yeah. It's like in the game, and like that's people have been okay with for the past, you know, ten years. That it's been yeah, it's on. like you know what? Okay, if you disagree with, and here's here's the one thing I kind of side with EA, like defend EA. They didn't even have the option to really like correct it, and and again, I'm not fully defending them because they could have gotten out in front of it better and just handled it better. But like the thing is, like I'll, I'll use Overwatch as an example. People complain about like all the duplicates and stuff like that, and after a while. Blizzard was like, yeah, okay, we agree with you, and we're going to change the algorithm for the loot crate so that you don't get duplicates anymore and stuff like that. So they could tweak the formula, right? They could tweak that formula, they could fix it based on player feedback and reception. Whereas, whatever for whatever reason, EA and, and Star Wars, like, they don't mix together, and people just got triggered, and we're like, no, we're not even going to give you this opportunity to fucking fix it or anything. We're going to fucking boycott your game, fucking all this other bullshit. We're going to contact government representatives and get them fucking involved. It's like, what? What? Like, <laughs> like, look, vote with your wallet. That's all I always said, and it's what I always stand by. Like, just don't buy the game, then. Just don't buy the game. You can opt out of it. Net neutrality, you can't opt out of unless you don't get internet anymore. It's like, oh, look, you pay for internet. You want to access? I have seen a lot more talk about that this week, though. Thank God. There's a lot oh, of right, talk about this week, but it's like, it's like, 
Yeah, we're two weeks away. Dude. We're two I know, weeks, two weeks away. away. But, I mean, I know, but I'm like, when somebody I, I, I work with, actually, an older, like a woman who's like, she's like older, she's like 65, 70, comes up, she's like, so what's going on with this net neutrality thing? And I'm like, oh, she's actually heard about this. All right, it's getting to people. So. <sighs> it's frustrating. But that's my but, two uh, cents. So. Yeah. Devil's right, out um, of ticket, though. Like, I can understand this being an issue, though, net neutrality thing. I, um,. I'm not for it, but I can understand where they're coming from. Because I would actually prefer to be able to be consistent with my, my speeds and know exactly what I'm getting and not be this Comcast shit that I have no idea what's happening. You don't know up what's and happening down, up and down. Yeah. I don't know. I understand, but I don't trust the IPs to do anything that will ever be in our favor. Yeah. yeah. That's the well, thing. no, they're not doing anything in our favor right now. But like, if I know I'm getting 100, uh, 150 every, every time, I know I can get that Like whenever I want. That's not... That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the uppercase scenario, I think, Corey. That's the uppercase. That is no, the best case scenario. I'm playing devil's advocate here. That's, that's no, all. And, and, and then let's see what ha- happens with which sites you're allowed to go to, too. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I mean, you want to use a search that. engine? Fuck you. We own Yahoo, so you only get Yahoo fucking search engine. You want to use Google? You want to use Bing? Pay us five bucks a month. Fuck you. <laughs> or you'll, it'll be dial-up speed or magically for those that, sites. And that's the thing. is Those charges will come down to us as far as what we'll be able to get but as far as like you know cable companies uh, you, you gotta under, understand how that works too and to know the whole side of the story the, the entire story as far as that works many sides i'm just saying you know how, <laughs> how it works like he's they, i just don't think you can go and say that neutrality is bad because it's gonna affect me like you, you gotta know, understand how i it think affects. i i personally feel the internet Everyone. should be a utility so yeah, but I understand absolutely, Jim. But I'm saying with net neutrality, like, what does that mean actually? What does it actually mean for you? Like, well, how does the cable, so how does cable and internet work? Like, do you even know like what that's going to mean in general? Yeah, government regulation on it to make sure that it's not, you know, monopolized. Yeah, I, I believe that's what it's for. That's why the net neutrality needs to be in place. Not just that, though. As far as cable companies, like, just because we have 100 down and 50 up doesn't mean Comcast exit does. They're, that's the whole part. Like, problem is, like, they're always manipulating what pipes are getting, what people are getting. That's why our internet's shit all the time, because you don't always have that. And that, well, that's what net neutrality is doing, is for. Yes. That's preventing them from charging us for those pipelines. No, it's not. Uh, no, Jim. That's not. That's not preventing them from charging us. It's allowing people to get exactly what they want when they want it. Uh, in 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 sure. In like again, in, I'm saying that's the, the best case scenario. World, that's like sure. a pie like, in the sky. Like, yeah, utopia. these IP companies are good and they're wholesome. They're, they're not going to fuck work. us in the ass. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that, like I said, I'm not, I'm just playing devil's advocate. This isn't even the the thing that bothers me the most about it. No, about both sides, that's all. I'm just like, just because, oh, it's going to affect me, I'm going to pay more, and oh, like, that doesn't, you don't. That's fine, I'm not saying people shouldn't educate themselves, but uh, I would side over what has been tried and true. And I just don't like how they can restrict access, sort of, to certain sites then, either through, like, the speed or... God knows what, and that's the part that I think is <laughs> troubling. Like, I'm sorry. When I see, I, I literally see a promoted tweet when I check Twitter from Cost, Comcast, and like, oh, we're not going to do all these bad things that we could be doing if net neutrality is lifted. It's like, okay, so if you're telling me you're not going to do that, then why don't you tell me why we should appeal it then? What would you be doing with it then? But they're, they're not focused on that. They're like, we promise we're not going to be an evil corporation, even though we are. So. No, fuck you, Comcast. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, where were we? Let's go to Bungie. All right. Let's go to Bungie. Uh, there was, you just there was an article you posted today, actually. What was the, the article for today about the, uh, uh, the, the Destiny canceled, players? They canceled the last DLC reveal tomorrow or whatever stream, I think, or something. Oh, wow. Well. So they're adding content to the game. Like, it, it's, Corey, are you still playing this game or no? I haven't played in a little while just because of the yeah, holiday and that's going to I've, I've heard a lot of people are just kind of like, there's not much to do in the game as well. I mean, like, Mike, yeah, has, Mike hasn't played it. Not Mike. Uh, not podcast Mike. My, my cousin Mike. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he hasn't been on. He's been bored. What? 
Oh, I thought we had more to add. <laughs> no, I, I think was waiting for you to actually tell us, us. the whole story. Oh, is. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we have Bungie caught throttling players' XP gains in Destiny 2, and that was earlier in the week. And then we had this new article today that, that Tony posted about uh, the Bungie responding to fans improperly and all that stuff. So um, the way they get their message across being the problem more than anything. Um, but, I think uh, Bungie's problem right now is that their communication to the community that li- loves exactly. their game has right, been very lackluster and and confusing and then they stop being for like forthright with what information they have so it's been uh i think it's been turning people's you know it's been rubbing people the wrong way especially the people that love the game yeah yeah i um i feel like yeah it's definitely all based on communication with them uh this like this article tony you posted originally about the xp restriction thing i i didn't really I, mean, I, don't see I, I feel so like they do that it. anyways in <laughs> XP games. Like, WoW did that because you you have to get more XP anyways to get the bar filled. So it's like they're that's not you anyways. That's not. That's they have not a daily what cap. About. Is what you're saying? No, the way it oh. worked was <clears throat> you leveled as normal or even boosted. I think they said they did the calculations until you hit max level, and then as soon as you hit max level, your XP gain goes down because your max level. And the only thing that XP does for you is keep you loot crates. So by reducing the XP that you oh, get, they were it's of... it's kind of like you know making incentivizing you, like, you incentivizing to buy, you to buy the loot crates. Okay, okay. And not only that, but they're like it, it's it would display a number like oh you got a hundred thousand experience or whatever I don't know I'm just saying a number but in reality you get like five thousand or something like that. It's like wait what like oh wow so like yeah that's misre- misrepresenting it. I mean they could have just made the loot crates more expensive and then kept the XP rate the same. Again, who knows what's going through these people's <laughs> minds when they're doing this. Like, yes, <laughs> they have to do that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go on to NPD and back with it. Let's go on the NPD. We didn't get to cover this last week. Switch was the number one console set off in sales for October. Uh, and it also had the best Black Friday, right? Uh, supposedly, according to Adobe? <laughs> yeah. Just the Black Friday day. We don't have a weekend numbers yet for that, but yeah, um, yeah. Switch was number one in hardware. Um, let's see, where was the, what else I have here? Um, overall, their top. Do we do top ten? Do we do top ten? Middle Earth took number one, which I would like to talk about because I thought we all talked about how that would be the most disappointing game in, when we did our predictions. I believe in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. How it was going to just get smushed in between these monster releases. I'm sure. Yeah, I thought so too. It I'm did great. surprised. It did great. This is October, right? This is October, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, Assassin's Creed I thought would have been better. It, I mean, yeah. Assassin's Creed I heard is a very good game, though, at least good for it. Uh, and it, it's still at number two, which is good for that as well, taking a year off, actually. Where did Mario fall? It's three, but it's. Um, so what's the top five? Your top. Well, it just reloaded on me. Thank you, <laughs> iPhone. Top five, Middle Earth, Shadow Thank of War. You. Number two, Assassin's Creed Origins. Number three, Super Mario Odyssey with an asterisk because no digital numbers are included. Number four, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. Number five, NBA 2K18. Number six, FIFA 18. Number seven, WWE 2K18. Number eight, Madden NFL 18. Number nine, Destiny 2 with an asterisk because no digital is included. And number 10, Forza Motorsport 7. And I'll even go to 11 because that's where Gran Turismo Sport is. <laughs> Uh, and then other new releases, Evil Within 2, number 13, and Wolfenstein 2 at number 14. Yep. Not so hot for those titles. No, no. Yeah, and but I, I think that's where they expected. Yeah, yeah, I heard Wolfenstein's a great game to play, too. I would like to... got play the first one, man. Yeah. I know, I know. Um, I mean, it's a sequel to that, or direct sequel. Yeah, I think that, it was that's important. I know, I... I I have Wolfenstein 2. I don't think I'm playing the first one, though, Corey. I just don't think it's happening. I think I'm just going to play 2. Do you have to play 1 to play 2? No. You don't have to, I mean, but it's a direct sequel. It is, but there's a recap, so... Mm-hmm. Offer the recap, man. You don't have the time. That's a thing. Here's the thing. I don't no, have time I, for this game. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, I don't have time. I, it's, not, it's a great game, though. Like, I think that oh, it's sure, not like... Not, oh, I'm just going to yeah. try to... like recap because it doesn't matter like i would recommend people not go into season two of walking dead on telltale and just do the recap like experience it for yourself yeah i think it's a good title i don't think you need to yeah, do the I'm, not expansion. It's not, 
I'm not saying it's not good, but like here's the thing, good is not enough for me. Like, I really have to de- uh, debate if it's worth playing a game these days. Because well, like, I understand. Like, I mean, I got... it's a short game though. It's right up Jim's alley. Oh, okay. Well, just, never mind. There you go. Oh, it's right in my. That's this is what you asked for, Jim. This is what that's you asked for. That's my wheelhouse. I bought it. I got it right here. Oops. Well, I'm talking about the first one. Oh wait, that's not it. That's Uncharted. Um, <laughs> I have it. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, there are games. I think that as far as like. I don't understand why you'd want to play the second one when the it's a direct sequel to the first one that it's building on that story with this title. Like other titles, fine. Like Evil Jim Within. Jim likes the newness. He Fuck, likes the newness. Fine. Flashy. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe Jim doesn't like playing old games. I do. What are you talking about? I play old games. I have Yakuza Zero here and Near. That's new. Like... That's this year. That's it's still this year. <laughs> Wolfenstein uh, is how we're old almost old out of this game. year. We're almost oh, out of this year. Goodness. No, no, I played, um, I play old games, um... It's BC stuff, man. I played uh, some stuff. I actually, oh, 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 uh, no, I didn't play it. Never mind. I installed Ninja Gaiden on the Xbox One X because I wanted to see it in 4K. And I, I installed it, it, but I didn't play it. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I... For this game specifically, I think it would be worth... Like, not every game, I agree, like, I, I, time-wise, sure, but... With this game, because it's story driven, uh, and the characters that are in the first game are going to be very heavily in this game, and like the villain specifically. And there's a character in the first game that uh, there's two characters in the first game, and one of the characters is going to be in the second game, depending on what you do in the first game. Hmm. I think. Oh, that, that's that's cool. That is cool. What you just said there. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, but, the, but the choice is in the beginning of this game. The choices actually matter. Yeah, choices matter. Wow, but the, that's but incredible. That option, I'm not even being sarcastic. Can... That's incredible. That's awesome. See, because you said that, I'm more inclined to play both of those games now. But yeah, I mean, you can get that experience in the same game. They'll give you that. It's like they'll do the the Mass Effect. No, I, I understand. I'm just saying that's and the, yeah, there's the recap. There's going to allow you to like do Shoot. the choices. But as far as yeah, I mean, it does affect the game, and it's pretty neat because it does affect the game in the first the first game too, pretty drastically. Hmm. So. Interesting. Ah, all right. Well, uh, but you, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying I think for this, I don't have it. No, it's it was 50, it was sixteen dollars on Black Friday. Yeah, I don't know, but it, I, like I said, I just personally think that it's a fantastic game. That's like, and as far as the sequel goes, you should probably play the first one in this in this uh, series, but not not everyone, just for this one. Okay. All right. Um. So maybe you'll play the second one and want to play the first one. Like who knows? Yeah, maybe. Like, um, they went over MPD. Let's get into what I've been up to then, playing wise, game wise. Uh, Tony kicks off. It's been two uh, weeks, see, I, so it's like two yeah, weeks. It's a bunch. Yeah. Uh, well, so we I mean, went to PAX. I mean, we oh didn't shit. Say anything that's right. We went to board that. game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we went to PAX Unplugged first of all, which is down in Philadelphia, which is a board game convention. Uh, the other PAXs are all like all encompassing, but this one is strictly for board and tabletop gaming. <clears throat> so that was pretty cool. It was at the Philadelphia Convention Center. Um, surprisingly it's busier much than local. I, much more local, at least for me. <laughs> it's like a half hour away, uh, as opposed to like the six hour drive to Boston. Uh, but it was really cool. It was actually um, more crowded than I figured it would be for a, a strictly like board and tabletop gaming uh, thing. Pax I do... name definitely helped a lot. Oh yeah, Pax name definitely helped. But I also I think I noticed a different like just audience than typical like Pax East stuff. Mm-hmm. It had a different First vibe, the, for sure. Yeah, it definitely had a different vibe. And a bit more chill and relaxed vibe, which is cool. Like, I didn't see people running around and being, like, jackasses all weekend and, you know, just stupid internet meme shit, you know, yelling, you know, stupid stuff. So that was cool. Um, yeah, there definitely wasn't any of that, which was nice. Yeah. A little more chill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, played a lot of board games, bought a couple board games. Um, I thought that um, it was overcrowded for day two, but way overcrowded. Saturday? Oh, yeah. Saturday yeah. was way overcrowded. Yeah. But. Yeah, I wouldn't say way overcrowded. I think it was crowded, and I understand like it was a little more crowded. But I still felt like there's plenty of times where at PAX East you just couldn't do oh, yeah. anything. Even like just trying to find a seat to sit down, you couldn't do that. We had a hard but time here, finding a seat here, though. I didn't think it was that big. I don't think it was bad. No PAX. No uh, way. <laughs> no way to compare. PAX Saturday it. like is so ridiculous. Uh, PAX Unplugged Saturday. It's like okay, I'm mildly inconvenienced, but. Like that, I wish 
PAX East would be as busy as PAX Unplugged. It was our first year, probably. It probably was our first year, actually. It was. Yeah, it was. No, I mean, it was like 50,000 people for a couple of years ago, like in PAX East, and now it's like almost hitting 80. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, this will grow, too. So. Yeah. No, I'm excited for next year because, like, it was their first first foray into the tabletop exclusive uh, convention. And I think they did a pretty good job with stuff as far as um, compared to other conventions. And it being their first, they've got a lot of learning that they can, they can do and, like, take some uh, suggestions and stuff for this one and expand on it and make it better for next year. I think it'll probably be – I think it's probably going to be bigger as far as, like, the areas that they'll have because it felt like it was just in that one area but the convention center is huge so they have room to grow as far as space is concerned as well okay all right uh tony game those game wise what okay <clears throat> uh so i beat fire and memorials on switch um which is fun is dynasty warriors though. if you played any Dynasty warriors that's what you got i um, still not happy with the roster like it could have been better you know beyond just the 3ds games um it got challenging post game because like they're like, oh look, you fight like actual high level enemies now. Where it's like, oh crap, they don't just die in one hit, which is interesting. I don't know if I'm gonna spend too much time on that. Uh, and then I picked up near uh, Automata again, beat uh, the second route, the second playthrough, and uh, I got trolled so hard. I mean, I did it to myself. A uh, little bit of a spo- not like story spoiler, but like spoiler of what you could do in this game. So, <clears throat> there's different endings in this game. There's 26 endings. Not all of them are required, but yeah. there's different things that you do during different points of the game and different playthroughs with different characters where you can get endings. Where it's like, oh, look, like this character just abandons the battlefield, and that's an ending because it's like the rest of the game can't happen because they ban- they're an important character and they abandon the battlefield. The, literally, that was like the second ending I ever got because like they're like, oh, go over here, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna go over here, and they're like, yeah, you beat the game because you abandoned the battlefield. I'm like. What? Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was at the beginning of the game, so I just reloaded the save and, and whatever. So in this, I played through like an hour, hour and a half of content, beat the game, the credits are rolling, and it's one of those things where you can play during the credit roll. And I'm just like messing around, just, you know, doing whatever. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but one of the moves that your characters have is if you press and hold both of the, jump, the joysticks in, um, you do a self-destruct move. Uh, it's like a last ditch, you know, kamikaze, whatever, where you're like you just wipe out all the enemies around you. So I was just like, ah, oh, whatever. They're not gonna let me do it, you know, here because it's like the ending and stuff like that. So, you know, hold the L L three and R three in, like go, go through the animation. Explosion happens, and then it tells me I got an ending. It's like, oh yeah, you blew up blah 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 and stuff like that, and it gives you like a bad ending. I'm like, oh, like <laughs> what? What? Like. Uh, what happened here? Did I get both endings then? Like, I'm confused. And so, you know, I, I wait until it, like, like, lets me load the save, and it's like, has, like, whatever bullshit ending X or whatever, you know, when I needed ending B or whatever. I'm like, okay. And then because of the save system, I did, I couldn't just go back and reload the credit roll. So I had to go through an entire hour, hour and a half of the, oh my like, God. my last save. Just so I could not fuck myself over with the credit reel. Like, I was so mad, dudes. I was just like, why did I do that? Like, like, why did I do that? But B, why is it program the game that you can do that? And like, I looked it up, and they're like, oh, yeah, you can get that ending like at any point in the game pretty much uh, after like the first hour. I just decided to do it during the credit roll because I didn't think it would be a thing. So don't do what I did. Don't blow yourself up during the credit roll. Mm. There you go. All right. That's what I've been doing. All right, Corey? Uh, just a lot of the board games. I, mean, uh, I do want to shout out to Cutthroat Kingdoms. I thought that was a really fun game. Played that with a group of people that yeah. we know, and that it's like the guy who designed it was there and basically said he saw a game, of, an episode of Game of Thrones, and was like, "I need to make a game like strictly on the political side of it, and just kind of focus on that." And so that game was a lot of like negotiations, making deals with people, breaking deals, backstabbing, and. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun, and the way that they progressed was pretty cool. And it even like had a pretty good catch-up mechanic too, where people like in last place or not doing too well could potentially come back and and uh, maybe even win. Like Tony got pretty close actually there. Yeah, came out of nowhere. Pretty... But uh, as far as video games, haven't really had much time to get into the money. The games played some more Lost Legacy, but uh, haven't beaten it yet. Yeah, uh, still 
I love I that. I love one. that. I picked that one up. I mean, Mike, anybody? Well, anybody pick up I some actually, good stuff? I actually, I actually just yeah. started, just started Lost Legacy. Oh, okay. all right. So you're yeah. going to play that one? Well, well, well we get into what we've been up to then, Mike. Go ahead. Lost did you get to the Legacy. open world part no, aspect of it? No, no. I literally just did the first two chapters, which is just like the introduction. Just did that so far. Um, it's all right. I don't know if I'm getting that into it again. I'm like, oh, it's just more of this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the combat's That's never the... anything good. It's more about the experience. They do yeah. do some nice combat stuff with the characters. They have a lot more combos. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I remember like. they had that in the other games, too. But I, I feel know. like it's more emphasized here than it was. Like, it's because they were always interchanging who was with the, uh, Nathan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, so I started that. But really, the big thing I did was uh, I played through the Frozen Wilds DLC. Nice. It's all done now. Yep. It's a long uh, DLC for right? Horizon. It's yeah. it's not as long I think as advertised, but it, it was. I mean, it's substantial. Um, so it opens up this whole new area of the map, and uh, there's some side missions too that you can choose to go on and or not. And uh, but there's like this main self. Const- storyline um you meet up with these new group of people and you just interact with them see what's bothering them there's something going on there and um and it's more horizon it's good there's the enemies now in this area most of them not all of them but a certain type of en- enemy you can't override anymore which changes things i think a bit um you do so- I- I never used override. I was like, this is a waste of time. I always yeah. used it. I always would override, like, whatever the first machine I would have. And then. I like the override there. just to see how that played out. Because, yeah, like, you can't, like, you can't stealth kill anything here. Anyway, it's all too big, pretty much, aside from, like, a watcher. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it was. Um, it's just good. It's just more horizon. It's not. The story isn't as interesting as the main story, and it is. It takes place like before you trigger that final mission in the main story, um, so it provides insight maybe for like what may come next, but it's not like a direct lead up to it, which is a little bit of a disappointment. I would have liked it to be like a post game story more, but it's still all right, and you do get at least a little more information about certain characters that may be very important in the next game. Mm. But um, yeah, it was fun again, and um, I'm upset because I know this is probably the only DLC, and I'm gonna wait like two, three, how many years before we get a proper sequel to this game? So uh, not until PS5, bro. Not until yeah. PS5. Yeah. It'll be a while. Yeah. All right. Um, I've actually got the credits to roll Mario. I'm not gonna use the word finished because that's not when the game ends. <laughs> you triggered um, the credits. Yeah, so I got the credits roll, Mario. So um, did you suicide during the credit roll? No, I didn't. I didn't uh, self destruct, so I didn't get that weird ending. Uh, no, no. Um, I, it's really cool the ending of that game where you can actually like. I don't want to spoil it for people, but it's it's a lot of fun the way the game the post game right? game is right. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I sat, like I can't remember the last time a post game gave me such like a smile. It's like well, ooh, I, Mario sixty four. I really enjoyed playing after I already finished it, going back for the stars. I always yeah. really enjoyed that. Um, right, but that's ninety six. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, it has that v- that vibe again, again, driving <laughs> home the point that this is like Mario. Oh, I got the Mario sixty four outfit too. Uh, I had to put that on. Um, so, uh, I wanted to say it, but I didn't want to spoil it because I thought that was a cool. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I figured that wasn't a spoiler. I'm sorry if it was. I didn't mean it as a spoiler. But there are outfits you can put on in that game which are really cool. So, um, I did that. Finished that game. I also picked up um, uh, Battle Chef Brigade. Oh, you did? Yeah, I've been playing. Nice, that. dude. Yeah. Oh, it's, nice. I meant to get it. Just, I meant to get it. I, just, I, I have so much on my Switch bag log. Oh, I'm like, I can't right now. So the Switch, I didn't overload. Although I did just get Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two. I did uh, too. Yep. But uh, on that sale, I got that on the sale. But I, I, this is really cool game. Um, the art in this game is so awesome. I really like the way the art style is. Uh, and it's, I love Shokugeki, the uh, Food Wars anime. So this is like right up my alley. And the game is really cool the way it's set up. It, it seems. Um, so far, I'm like I'm caught probably three or three hours into it, roughly, um, and uh, it's like kind of a little not basic, but you have your puzzle game where it's when you're cooking, it's a puzzle game, so you have to move uh, orbs into the right spots. 
uh, but you have to collect those orbs outside when you're fighting creatures. Uh, and I also quickly learned about I don't want to kill every creature because I don't need that orb. I don't need to pick it up. I, you probably have to kill them so they're not in your way. But do not pick up everything. You only have yeah. like a satchel that can hold a certain amount of ingredients. And you have like six minutes to do this. You have to go through, get the ingredients. Each, um, each yeah. judge has their preference into food, what they want to end the dish, Taste what the dish needs to be about. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's really cool. Like you have to go. So you have to go hunt down. Like someone will say, "I really like a watery dish," and you have to go out and get like water orbs. But then there's a theme to the dish where like you got to kill a dragon or whatever the hell. You have to go kill this beast uh, and use that meat in the dish. So then you have to cook that, and it's it's, yeah. it's cool. You can yeah, so just expand and stuff. Go ahead. Yeah, just expand upon that a little bit. And I only know because I've, I've been following this game, I think, since like the last time you, you guys all went to PAX uh, with us. Um, the uh, the way the three-match works is like the orbs, you know, take any three-match three, three game, you know, Candy Crush or mm, Poyo yeah. Pop or whatever. Like – the orbs you have to earn by killing beasts and stuff in the wild because those are your ingredients. The orbs are your ingredients. Yeah, yeah. So you have, you know, whatever amount of time you have to go and find and kill your beasts because they're your ingredients and then go back and cook it. So it's a juggle of, okay, do I spend more time initially getting the ingredients that I think I'm going to need or, you know, do I come back and, like, do it, you know, back and forth? Because the thing is apparently there's, like, higher quality ingredients from like mm -hmm. tougher monsters or something like that so it's like yep. maybe it's worth the time investment to get the you know higher level monster because they have a better ingredient uh drop or whatever like that so yeah, so far uh, I've been i thought it was an interesting like, twist uh, so far i go right for the main ingredient <clears throat> on my my strategy mm -hmm. and then like i so, don't grab I'll, I'll do like some like appetizer i'll just go for some quick stuff and then i'll <laughs> like if i have time i'll look at the timer left i'm like okay i got a minute and 30 I might be able to kill a couple things and then run back to the, to the kitchen uh, and then start cooking it again and get. But you have to plate it within before the time runs out, so um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And there and it takes I think like it's really two seconds to plate it. You have to actually hold the button for it to plate. So yeah. it's like it's not instant. You have to kind of time it all just right. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, but you, 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 there's jobs, there's puzzles in that game. It's it's cool. Uh, there's like you work a job in that where you're serving food, uh, and you have to get the puzzle pieces to match up the way people want it to make your ingredient so it's really good i really enjoy it so far i picked it up um i was interested when right when i saw it at the uh the the direct the indies thing. yeah yeah, the, yeah I, indies. immediately i knew i was getting that game so uh i had a road trip i'm like perfect so i'm gonna play this and um i also got oh talk about i don't play older games I'm playing halo 5 Ooh. Wow. Oh, that's because you have the Xbox One X. <laughs> yes. So the game looks fantastic. I mean, and it came out 60... on the Xbox One. Yeah, One. Uh, and the game looks fantastic. <laughs> it runs fantastic. I am probably... I want to say I'm probably halfway through at this point. Maybe a little further than halfway. I'm, I'm pretty far into it. I've probably played five, five hours, six hours. And talk about a game that just... I, I know we're talking about a video game here, but talk about a game that doesn't have a soul. Like it just, like that. It's that's the best way I can describe this game. Like it's just like you're going through the paces of it. Like, Isn't Luke Cage in this movie? In this game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might be. Uh, yeah, yeah, he might be actually. Um, but yeah, like he plays as the guy. He plays as the main guy in this. Is Locke, the main right? Guy? Yeah. Locke. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it is Locke. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's probably why. Uh, but there's just no soul playing. to it. Like, it's just not, like... <laughs> I'm just not feeling the drama for it. I'm like, they, they really try to make it cinematic and involving, and I'm just like, I there's no feels to this game. Like, it's just not there. Mm. So, I mean, it plays fine. It plays technically great. looks great. Just, there's not much to the campaign, really. I mean, there's not much there. So, you know. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah. But I am playing older games, see? That is older-ish. That's still was really released for one though. I think we're talking about more backwards compatibility. Oh, stuff. BC games. We talk about that. We don't. You and I don't play BC games. No, no, no. I'm just saying that's. Uh, yeah, we don't have to defend that, Jim. That's I all. I thought you meant like first first launch games on this system. That's what I thought you meant. Like, I'm like no, I play some older. You know, open when I think of older games, games, I don't think of games that are released on the on the, this generation. Well, I, I think of the games that were. I don't use backwards back, compatibility. Back. I really don't. So. All right. Right, and uh, that's why we say you don't play older games, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think that's gonna wrap up the game cast, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Uh, follow us on Twitter, All I Can Geek. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Write us podcast at allicangeek.net as well. 
tune in next week. We'll go over some more stuff. Uh, I don't even know what's coming out in movie uh, in movies news and gaming news, but we got a lot of games we all picked up. So on the Black Friday deals, uh, we'll talk about that. And um, yeah, thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. See ya.